Hello, my name is Shahid Jamil and I am the CEO of the Welcome Trust DBT India Alliance. In this video, you will hear from members of the India Alliance Fellowship Committees on how to prepare for the interview. What sort of feedback should you seek? Who should you talk to? Should you give mock presentations? What sort of questions you can expect? How thorough you should be with the literature in your field of research? What happens after the interview? After you have left the room, how are decisions made? Is mentorship important for you? Would you benefit from mentorship? These are very important things that you may not normally think about, but that is what distinguishes an outstanding candidate from an average candidate. So enjoy the video and all the best. Preparation is really everything. Preparation is 90% of the, of the task, I would say. There has to be a really good biological question underlying the application. And the applicant has to be clear about what that question is and then they have to be, have a clear strategy for how they're going to answer that question. What are your hypotheses and how you will address your hypotheses? What is the importance of the questions that you want to, that you are planning to address? And uh, uh, why is this the right time to ask those questions? What is it about the training that you've had and the work that you've done before and the expertise that you have acquired that makes you the right person to be doing the experiments to address those questions. The applications that don't succeed are ones where the committee just don't know what the question is. The applicant needs to have an encyclopedic knowledge of uh, the area in which he or she is going to work on. They need to have clarity in terms of uh, how they are going to approach the problem, what is the nature of the problem, what types of experiments will they do, what results would be the outcome of uh, such experiments, what would it lead to in the future? So there should be a strong, I mean, a section on the background and uh, what's currently known in the field and what are the holes and what will, what will be the, motive, what is the motivation for uh, carrying out the set of experiments in the specific games. While it is about delivering a really good project, it's also about you as a person and developing you as a person. So having the necessary uh, training built in to your proposal is important so that by the end of the proposal the committee can feel you really are a well-trained uh, scientist who can go on to the next stage. Many students, many applicants make this mistake that they are not familiar with what's going on elsewhere in the world so in the end they end up being critiqued for things that they should have known. Um, and the other point I want to mention here is uh, today biology is very rich in data and experimental measurements often give rise to large amounts of data. Having good quality controls, having good data analysis is absolutely an essential component of the research. These are things which every applicant has to take seriously into account in doing the analysis. As you prepare for the interview, uh, mock interviews are really very, very important. Very often mock interviews are much tougher than, than the actual event, so don't be too alarmed. Where I work, nobody ever goes for an external interview without getting a practice interview with people like me first. And they always come back and saying, but they were so much nicer than you, and that's how it should be. That mock should be a formal uh, experience wherein you're asked to walk into the room, the committee is already assembled, it has a chair, they will tell you you have limited time, and they will ask you questions. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough the value of this sort of mock interview. Get together people who have experience in interviewing because you need to have a mock interview that really um, will inform you of what the, the, the genuine article will be like. Mock interview should really be done at least a week before the interview because you may well need a week to address the different issues that the mock panel identifies. The committee is not there to ask them questions, to trip them up or in any way. They're really just trying to gather information all the time. So it's to come in, be natural, and be themselves, really. We, we always ask people when they first come in the room to give a five-minute talk. So rule, the golden rule to start with, your five-minute talk will be five minutes. So if you want to give a 10-minute talk, you have basically failed the interview before it's even started. So get the timing right. You already know there are going to be two set questions. One of them is, can you summarize your career course or career trajectory up until this point? The second 
uh, set question is, can you please summarize for us briefly uh, what is your proposed project? So in other words, a short encapsulation of your project. Again, it's a question you can prepare for well in advance and the timing here is crucial. My suggestion to young people who make presentations is not to make each slide, each presentation slide incredibly complicated. This always leads to confusion in the minds of those who are interviewing them. Make sure that it's succinct, that it focuses not on what you plan to do, but what you plan to achieve. And then end up with a summary of this is how I'm going to achieve my goals and this is why you should fund me. The presentation should follow the following format. It should have, uh, number one, a stated objective of the proposal in the background and context of what is known. Number two, it should be the specific aims illustrated in very clear ways. Number three, there should be a statement of goals and uh, what will be what, what's the expected outcomes and what are the fault modes. And number four, there should be clear timeline and milestones. Applicants spend too much time telling us what they have done and not enough time telling us what they're going to do. Um, we've all, the, the committee will have all read the CV, they will have read what the person has done, so they'll, they'll know what they've done. So they shouldn't spend too much time on, on the past, but I think it's important to talk about the future. The applicant has to assume that he or she is the master of their application. They should have given substantial thought to the application, to the, to the, to the aims of the application. And so they should be able to articulate their aims in very simple and elegant ways. It will also um, concern things like if you are suggesting experiments that perhaps are a little bit risky to do, what are you going to do if those experiments don't work? It's always very powerful if um, the panel uh, realises that you have thought about what is risky in your proposal and what is rock solid. it's important to enter the interview with the right frame of mind. When you come in, we have to have confidence that you understand enough about your project that you're going to be able to deliver on the, on the science. Because after all, these fellowships are, you, this is a lot of money that you're being given to do your science. Listen with your utmost attention to what the questioner really means and take a few seconds before diving into your answer. One of the questions that very often um, comes towards the end of the interview is um, where do you see yourself in five or ten years time? And what this question is really asking you to think about is how will it progress your career? Uh, what will be the new areas of expertise that you will have acquired? Uh, where will it take you in terms of your longer term goals? So don't just think about the next few years, think also a little bit about where you would like your career to go in the future. Never underrate the importance of enthusiasm. There's nothing impresses a group of senior scientists more than somebody who has passion and enthusiasm for their subject. So if you've got that skill to bring that across in interview, it will never ever do you down. Enthusiasm is a tremendous uh, uh, bonus. What impresses us is somebody who really has a passion for science, that they want, that they have a scientific question they wish to address. That is the single most important thing on, on the committee. Ultimately, we expect our fellows to be potential leaders of Indian science. They bring Indian science always at a, working at an international level but you can't be a research leader if you're not passionate about your, about your science. Enjoy the interview, because after all, this is your life's work that you're presenting, and this committee is genuinely interested in what you're doing. That's actually a great situation to be in as a scientist, that you have a team of experts around the table, fascinated by, interested in what you propose to do. Take it as a mature, interesting, scientific uh, conversation during which when they ask you the questions, you should be able to actually enjoy giving the answers. Mentorship, in, in my way of thinking, is really important because mentorship comes early in your career from senior people. And I, so if, you're, if you are fairly early in your career, it's worth, as you prepare your proposal, to think very carefully about um, who your mentor will be. We all know the experience of being supervised through a PhD. What happens after the PhD when that PhD supervision is finished? Do you still require a supervisor as such? Clearly not. But do you require any kind of guidance? 
That's the question. So mentorship through your career is absolutely essential, particularly for early stage and intermediate fellows. Science progresses through discussion and so you have to be in a place where you can have a good relationship with your supervisor because ideas rarely originate through conversations and discussions. And I think an early career fellow who went to a lab where they worked in total isolation without being able to have conversations with more experienced scientists would not progress very well. I think there's no nothing that works as well as peer peer reviews and peer comparisons and peer critiques. And so instead of regarding these as criticisms or in terms of uh, negative criticisms, each applicant, each uh, funded applicant should view this uh, presence of peers, presence of those who can take a hard look at the science as an asset as opposed to being a limitation or a negative criticism. I think this is where mentorship should play a very important role. It's very important that, that people know what standard of work they're expected to achieve and a mentor can do that. Mentors can be very, very important in advising on how to behave scientifically, discuss issues of how to run a collaboration, ethics, um, all these issues. Men mentors can play a very key role. Once they get uh, supported, they need to really keep a constant contact with the mentor to ensure that A, they are doing quality work, B, that their work is presentable in international forums, and see that they can benefit from the wisdom and experience of the more senior members of uh, the institution. Uh, you know, in these areas, mentorship is really very critical. One other element that the committee is looking for, almost an intangible element, is a term called scientific maturity. The process of maturation involves recognition of quality science, number one. Number two, ensuring that uh, your science can be reproduced with absolute fidelity. Number three, ensuring that your science has applications and implications for other researchers. And number four, to ensure that science has, uh, can be extended, extensible, is extensible to newer domains of knowledge. The scientific maturity we're looking for, what you're really looking for is somebody who's been able to, to phrase a question, phrase a scientific question that, that is their question, that's unique. What the fellowship helps them do is to get the technical experience and the experimental advice to answer their question. But the maturity comes from the question. It doesn't come from being skilled in a particular technique. It really comes from having some vision about an important scientific question that's addressing an important biological problem. It will help you in the process of maturing to think about uh, the next steps that you're going to take. It's like playing a game of chess. You need to be always thinking several moves ahead in a combinatorial manner so you can really start, uh, I mean, being very serious about science. After the applicant has led the room, the next phase of the application is each of those members of the committee will discuss their opinions on the application, on the, the applicant's performance at the interview, what the feeling is about their ability to deliver on the science. Thereafter, other members of the committee will join in, join in the discussion and at that point, um, we reach a decision, we decide to score the um, application. People explain why they are giving the scores so that nobody can give an underhand score of, say, a low score without explaining to everybody in the committee exactly why they're giving a low score. And equally, nobody can give a high score without explaining why they're giving a high score. If you have had an interview where you feel frustrated that you haven't answered some questions as well as you would have liked, don't be too concerned about that because um, the decision is going to be made on the basis of many more things than just your performance in the interview. In which this decision is made oftentimes is based on the following objective factors. Number one, it is based on the feasibility of the proposed project. Number two, it's based on uh, the uh, kinds of controls and the kinds of likely impact that the proposal, that the research will have in the field. Number three, we want to know if the, in the, if the applicant has uh, the scientific credentials, the capability, and the ability to complete this research in the way it's proposed, in the way it's he, he or she is thinking about it. There will be an assessment of how your career has gone to date, um, how your publication record has been, your referees' reports, and in the case of um, early career um, fellowships, how the mentorship um, it will, will act and whether the, a good mentorship is in place. Trying to make sure that there is a deep compatibility between the written application, the oral presentation in terms of A, depth, 
be expertise and see in terms of scientific erudition would be the valuable commodities for us to evaluate a candidate for funding.